guys, it's Leanna, and I'm here today with Amanda. Hi! Which is unusual, <laughs> I know. I'm not sitting where I normally sit. I'm not alone. <laughs> Forever alone. I have whiskey instead of coffee. <laughs> Yay! So today, we're going to talk about how I made Amanda read The Blade Itself. But it was in retaliation because she made me read two, which turned into three bodice rippers. <laughs> well, two of them were bodice rippers. She, she One of them me. had magic and stuff. True. It get, it did kind of start as me being conniving and being like, I want to force Leanna to read these books because I like them. Because our reading styles are similar a lot of the time if it's a Venn diagram. But there's a lot on the outlying sides of this Venn diagram <laughs> that don't match. Accurate. And I force... Joe Abercrombie on a lot of people, and she forces Tessa Dare on a lot of people. So we just decided Trade. as friends to like pleasantly force one another. Yeah. Just like she forced me to drink wine on her channel, <laughs> and the link to that video is down below on the Naughty Librarian, and I'm making her drink whiskey. I so. like never drink hard liquor, so I feel like things are about to get real weird. <laughs> Cheers! Yay! Ugh. Yum. <laughs> be a lot of that face. <laughs> so hopefully you didn't make that face when you read The Blade itself. She's been real secretive. I know some of her thoughts, but not like complete thoughts. So, Amanda, how did you feel about... Oh, it's not even on camera. I had I pulled out every edition of The Blade itself that I this own. This is the one I read, so let's play with this one. All right. Okay. Pick. This is the one I read, this edition, because I bought the fancy one. Because I did like it. I liked it enough that I went out and bought it from Book Depository. So it came from, like, Europe. From Europe, guys. From Europe, From guys. Europe. <laughs> Which is where Lord Grimdark lives, so. It's true. Um, I ended up giving this four stars. I'll say that. Let's just start top. Four stars. I gave it four stars instead of five stars because I don't know what the plot is. I don't think there was one. Totally fair. Um, I also gave it four stars. So I've, like, <laughs> I felt better when you said that the other day. I was like, oh, me too. <laughs> it's like my secret. I'm like. The Joe Abercrombie girl that, like, people tell me. That's, like, one of the top things that I hear from people is, like, a, I read this because you recommended it. And I'm always, like, it's, like, my all-time favorite four-star read. <laughs> like, I love the shit out of it. Four stars. It's a very long prologue to I'm what I'm assuming in the next two books is the actual plot. <laughs> like, yeah. seven, eight hundred page prologue. I feel like, in general, because, like, the trilogy, like, it's, like, it does get to a like there's like a reason for everything and a plot and like by the end of it like you get it but it does like kind of meander and the other books kind of do that a bit too which is why I praised kids on camera I don't know you can see but best served cold is the standalone that comes after the trilogy and like it's like all of the like punch of this trilogy <laughs> condensed into a single book so okay. it's just like n like all of that no meandering no time yeah. for that is just like non-stop Stop. action stabbing Yes. <laughs> and it's the main character is a female, which is refreshing. So. Is it is it like a character we met in this? There are characters. The main female character you didn't meet in the trilogy, but there's like a lot of other characters in it, either that are like working with her on because it's a revenge story. So she assembles a crew to like kill seven men. <laughs> and so some of the people in her crew are from the trilogy. And then some of the other people that are like adjacently mentioned or appear like you kind of recognize from the trilogy. So it's like not a direct sequel, but it's like in the same world. Yeah. Okay, got it. But that's not the one you read. It's not the one I read. Segue. <laughs> we did this with the romance books yesterday. Yeah. All the segues. Um, so the blade itself, which I'm not gonna keep holding up like a weirdo. So we just know it's what not we're talking weird. about. You want to hold close the things you love. It's true. It is a pretty book, but <laughs> pretty play itself. Um, I think the best way to describe like my thoughts about it is just go by character because, like I said, there's not really so much of a plot. A lot of like things to happen. Start with the fuck boy, <laughs> <laughs> who Amanda has named, and I will forever refer to as. <laughs> so there's this character named Giselle. <laughs> Which I was like swallowing at the whiskey. same time as I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, Did that help? <laughs> no. Um, so there's this character named Giselle, with out swallowing during saying his name and he is like the fuck boy of all fantasy fuck boys and i remember texting that to you like immediately i'm like what kind of fuck boy is this <laughs> maximum fuck boy because everything about him is just so fuck boy and then like but like by the end of the book you still feel like okay like maybe there's hope for him yet and then you're like, oh, maybe he does like have some real feelings and he's gonna get better. And then I'm like, no, that's how fuckboys get you. 
Yeah. So by the end of the book, Plus it's I, an Abercrombie yeah. book, so anytime you think that a character is like, redemption arc, oh, they murdered someone again. Okay, that's just kidding. That's <laughs> another thing. I feel like the, a lot of the humor in the book is just like, isn't that the most fucked up thing you've ever seen? Oh my gosh. Like, that's the joke. Or it's just like characters that you think you have like a good grasp of who they are, um, like Logan. I kind of got the feeling towards the end of the book that, oh, Logan is this guy who keeps getting forced into these violent situations, but he's very much tired of violence. He just kind of wants to live his life. And then he's like, which is true. <laughs> but Joe Gabbard comes just like, <laughs> fuck you. He's going to headbutt a guy to death and have a ball. <laughs> a so I'm like, <laughs> nope, he just likes killing. He's not like tired of it, really. So, I mean, every mm. character you think you know is just like, <laughs> fuck you. Or like, again, I mean, characters like other fantasy books would be like, but beneath it all, there's, like, a hidden, like, story of trauma to, like, redeem how bad they are. Except usually the story no. of trauma, you're like, oh, that makes them worse. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. No, it, it, there's nothing, like, explaining their behavior. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, we just fucked up. They're just the people that other fantasy books are usually making the bad guys. And here we're like, nope, we're going to follow them. Yeah. <laughs> them heroes. Or, like, um, West. Yeah, he's, like, the most heroic-ish. That's until... what I thought. But I, I was reading the whole book. I'm like, West, I think I have a grasp of this character. He's, like, he's genuinely, like, one. kind of, like, a hero character. Like, he's trying to do his best. And he's, like, a good guy. And he's like, oh, really? Hold my beer. He's about to beat up his sister <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Awkward." laughs> it was just one thing after another it's just like it like he like like lulled me into the sense of like feeling safe and he's just like i'm about to fuck shit up <laughs> so who hurt you joe abercrombie who it's funny like you? in interviews like people have like asked him that before <laughs> basically been like um do you have like a really traumatic background that like all of this is just catharsis for and he's like I lived the most vanilla, boring, middle class, average life. He was like, so that's where all this comes from. It's like, <laughs> all of like, my life is the most boring thing ever. So he's like, every like, depraved thought he's ever had puts it into a story. Yeah. I mean, there's, the violence is like, intense. Yep. Like, more... I there's no sex in the first book, right? Is there? No. Okay. I mean, Giselle wants to yeah. with that one girl. Just because, like, he does, Joe Abercrombie does put, like, sex scenes into the, in the trilogy. I think it's in the second one. Is and it with Logan one. and that, that wild lady? Spoilers. But point being. I feel like they're going to bang. Like, they just are. Point being, the banging is just as grimdark <laughs> as all the violence. I know. Was. Like, I can see them banging and it not being good. <laughs> okay. My favorite word, which encapsulates it, is squelching. <laughs> Much squelching. <laughs> I, I, I like to read some fluffy rom coms every once in a while, and there's no squelching. In my video where we discuss the bodice rippers I made you read, you actually kind of liked a couple of them. Yeah, I did. So that's a, like a preview. If you want to see Leanna read outside of her comfort zone and actually like it. Yeah, I actually did. <laughs> no squelching involved. No squelching. Well, like, and we did totally talk about this in the other video that, like, some of like the like the scarred hero type person in the rom-com, I'm used to the scarred hero being like the center of a grim dark fantasy like yeah. Logan Ninefingers. So like it was so weird for me to basically have Logan, but like he's a duke with like a wife in there banging and making jokes. And I'm just yeah. like, but <laughs> no, <laughs> he's like a grim dark tragic hero. But <laughs> also comedy. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Lovey so dovey. It's, it's taking one of these characters and putting them in a completely different context. Basically. The sex had zero squelching. Very, very romantic. <laughs> it, it was, it, well, I mean, sometimes they were just fucking, but it was like good fucking. Yeah, it wasn't Abercrombie <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Brave myself here. Acquire the taste. Eventually, when I drink enough, I won't mind. But <laughs> okay, so now tell me about my favorite character, Sandan Glockta. <laughs> How did we feel about Santa and Lockta? I kept thinking the whole time that dentures existed. One, but for every other tooth? Yeah. Uh, someone guess, can figure that out. expensive. Like he has something else to spend his money on. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, dentures existed in this, like, time period. They could have figured it Maybe out. Maybe not in the world of the first law. They didn't invent dentures. <laughs> the, no one gets teeth. <laughs> no one gets teeth. <laughs> That's like the one thing I'm just like, he could have fixed this. That's like a fixable thing. The rest of his body's pretty damn broke. I mean, you can't fix the rest of it, and that's unfortunate. But, like, teeth were fixable. I guess it may have been just like a why bother when everything else is also broken. But then he could chew. 
I guess. I mean, and it's talk. a fair point. Yeah, so that, yeah. But anyway, But there is Glockta. also <laughs> the fact that Glockta likes to grin at people with his horrendous missing teeth grin his to freak smile. them out. <laughs> so, like, it's kind of, like, also a thing he uses on purpose to, like, unsettle people. Yeah. Well, Glockta, I think, used to be Jazal when he was young. And now he's oh. just like, I am a creature. <laughs> I like to always say the Glockta's like Jamie Lannister if Jamie Lannister got, like, broken AF and yeah. came back and was like, well. Well, I'm missing most of my teeth and a lot of other parts. I don't know. I don't like, oh, no, I'm sorry. Then I just started thinking about what else he's missing. So then I just went down that rabbit hole. I'm like, everything. they did something wrong to his junk. Like, yes. <laughs> I don't know if he has it anymore. You find out. <laughs> he kept saying he has to sit down to pee. So I'm like, mm, oh, well, sorry. Cheers to your junk, Glock. <laughs> Yeah, so you can tell I read um, a fair amount of romance if, like, the first thing I'm thinking, like, but does his junk work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially, I feel like even in a grimdark fantasy or, like, any kind of, like, man-centric fantasy, that does, like, frequently come up also. Yeah. Because dudes, like, comparing. <laughs> it comes up. <laughs> Not for Glockta. <laughs> Not for Glockta. Moment of silence. <laughs> but, like, like I said, I read so many romances, I'm just like, where's his, like, who's gonna love him anyway? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I did think to myself, like, when I first read it, that Glockta, because, like, okay, for people who don't know, Sandan Glockta is basically, like, Jamie Lannister, like, a attractive, young, like, extremely, like, successful knight type dude who's a complete prick. And then he gets captured by the enemy in war, and they torture the shit out of him, which is why he's missing half his teeth, body is broken, he's, like, a mess. And then he comes back from the war because he survived that, and the government's like, what? do we do with you? Yeah. So they make him a torturer. So he like tortures confessions well, out of people. An inquisitor. An inquisitor. And so when people like, he's like, he knows how to torture people because it's been done to him. Yeah. He learned firsthand. Yep. And so when people try to threaten him, he's like, make my day. What could you possibly do to me that was not already done to me? <laughs> but I feel like if this was not Joe Abercrombie, like if this was written by like Terry Goodkind or if it was in a romance novel, Glockta would be like kind of broken but like some part of him would still look good and then you'd have that like redemption like mm -hmm. female seeing that he's like fine and he like yeah or you'd have it be like in treat me where the guy is like literally a freak show and she's like listen I've seen corpses so yeah I've seen worse <laughs> you know? Glockta like doubles down on being awful, awful. <laughs> He likes to torture people. That's like his thing. And I mean, it's the kind of the only thing he has going. But then he has that one scene with West. He's like, oh, like, I'd like to have a friend again. And you're like, he's like the Grinch and his heart grew three sizes too big. Well, when he came back from the war, like, because he was popular. And then yeah. when he came back all like tortured and broken, like no one wanted to have anything to do with him. So he's just like, fuck all y'all. But yeah. it turned out like his friend did try to come see him. So. West, who I thought was a nice character, who then like horribly beat his sister and like strangled her. Speaking of, how did you feel about R.D. <laughs> West? R.D. <laughs> West. Um, like the main female character of the story. I am so, f I would want to read a whole spinoff where she's the lead of it. She's definitely in, like, she more. She fascinates me endlessly, because I don't know what her angle is. What's her fucking angle here? Her fucking angle. Her, her yeah. fucking angle. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I know everyone got, much. like, a boner for her, apparently. Because she's also, like, because she's kind of lower class, not, like, the total, like, delicate, pasty white female, mm -hmm. but she's ballsy, and, you know... Yeah, but then, like, Dudes like that. and then, then Giselle would go on and on and she's like, well, she's not really conventionally attractive, but, like, I'd bang her. And then, like, he starts to, like, really, really like her eventually. And then all those pasty, like, yeah. delicate females, he's like, God, you're boring compared to yeah. R.D. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, R.D. I, I don't know what her angle is yet, but I'm so fascinated. Oh, I can't wait for you to read the next books. <laughs> I... I ordered the next books, I tell you. I know. And I ordered these editions so they match. They're so pretty, too. Friendship. I want her and Glock to, like, team up on stuff. No comment. Well, I, they were teaming up at the end of it. Mm-hmm. But then, oh, but Glock is leaving, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> everyone's leaving at the end of the books. Everyone's going off in different directions. True. There's but Glock is just like, listen, I don't care who you fuck. I just need you to not, like, die. Because, <laughs> like, your brother's nope. cool. Pretty much. <laughs> I love, one of my favorite things is Glockta's internal monologue because like have his corrupt bosses and he knows exactly how stupid and corrupt they are, but he also knows that he has to like nod and smile and like bow and scrape. But his internal monologue is just like so snarky and sassy and just like having none of it. 
I will live for it. <laughs> <laughs> like anyone who's ever been frustrated at work is like, I feel you, Glockta. Yeah. I feel you. I, I like the wizard. I can't remember his name right now. Oh, uh, Baez? Baez. He's yeah. like the only character that like didn't like shock me. You know what I mean? Like I understand that character. Joe Abercrombie didn't fuck with him yet. I was going to say yet. Yeah. <laughs> I said yet, yeah, like, like, well, kind of, like the, con- the conceit of the trilogy is kind of taking traditional fantasy arcs and tropes, like the hero's quest, the wizard, the like broken hero, like the broken knight kind of thing, um, and kind of shitting on all of them. So like yeah. your Gandalf type who's Baez, he's not exactly like wise and benevolent and like... Yeah. You know, he doesn't really he's make like you R-rated feel. He's like Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> like he doesn't really fill you with a sense of like everything will be fine because Gandalf's here. You're just like, uh, I'm glad Baez is on our team. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. Like he like is a character I understood because he's always just like kind of snarky and like cheating and being a dick and like that's his like thing because he knows when it comes down to it, he's going to win any fight he gets into. Because, right. like, he's also horrifying when his magic comes out. I was going to say, like, that was one of the things that, like, I don't think I really ever talk about when I talk about the books or, like, with people who I convince that, like, the way Joe Abercrombie writes magic, it's not in it much. And when it is, it's, like, really unsettling. And you're just like, yeah, oh, don't use it. It's like, you're fucking with nature and I'm not comfortable with it kind of, like, vibe, mm-hmm. which I felt... But Baez like is also him. talks about that too. He's just like, hey, you know, don't fuck with some shit. That's some shit. Like, because if you start eating people or something, I don't yeah. know. There's also people who eat people in this. Mm-hmm. And like, that's also a joke too in it because they find like a body that had been eaten. And they're just like, it, the whole joke of that scene is like, isn't this fucked up? Yeah. And they're kind of trying you know? to like convince him it was dogs. He's like, but it was a people. So he's like, a person of undetermined sex or age was eaten to death <laughs> by another person. That's all you know. <laughs> yep. He's yeah, like, that's like become yeah. like a magic thing too, where like it's sort of like the cost versus payoff of like if you're willing to do something that horrible and unnatural as eat humans, then you get power out of it, but it's like a really fucked up power that like messes mm-hmm. with you. So there's just like this sense of like anytime you're doing something that's magical, you're like fucking with the natural order of things and that is like not right like and you don't feel right about it even if you're like I feel like they um Logan when he's near Baez using magic just like being adjacent to it he's like I don't feel comfortable right now like I feel that things are being fucked with that should not be fucked with kind of like Logan's like whole thing just like listen I don't want to fucking know I know a lot of shit and has never done me any good. I just want to just do what's happening right now. Don't tell me about your epic plans. I don't yeah. give two shits. <laughs> Pretty much. Doesn't pay to know. But then he goes full berserker. You forget that Logan is a berserker. Like, that's his thing. He calls They call him Logan Nine Fingers or the Bloody Nine because he's a fucking berserker. Yeah. He's known for, like, murder. <laughs> There's a reason the Northmen are, like, the Bloody Nine is, like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, because you kind of forget. Because we see him trying not to be in violence and violence just keeps coming to him, but he's always defending people. He's trying to save people. So you kind of get the sense of him that like, oh, he's like, he's kind of like legit, like the Hulk. Where like when he's like normal scientist man, he's like, I'm just trying to like live my life, just like peaceful, whatever. Like, I don't want to get in your shit. But if you trigger him, holy shit. (laughs) He will headbutt you to death. He headbutted someone to death. To death. (laughs) Like, he, he he burst the other guy's head with his head. That takes, like, a lot of headbutting. Yep. Berserker. And a lot of He had bucks. the best time doing it, too. It was, like, yep. a lovely Sunday afternoon. <laughs> yep. So, lack of plot aside, fun experience. Yeah, I gave it four stars. I thought it was well written. I, I even if, like, the things that, like, are very violent and were bothersome, I was just like... Ugh. It's just Joe Abercrombie spitting in my face, basically. <laughs> but he wrote it really well. So I'm like, fine, just spit on me, I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just feel like, I don't, like, you can tell me if this is your experience, but like, did you, I feel like even though the subject is really dark and the people are like not good, the magic is dark, there's blood and violence, I never really feel like super depressed or weighed down. Like the writing style is just kind of like, that's just how it is. Like, I don't ever feel like, Ugh, and like gross and mm. like I don't know I feel like other like Grimdar fantasies I'm just like this is like heavy whereas with Joe Abercrombie I'm just like that's some fucking shit <laughs> that's like the general tone but the, he does have a few moments in there where he lets it be fucked up without the joke 
like uh the end of part one where logan has to sorry these are all spoilers but i'm assuming <laughs> everyone who's on leanna's channel has probably read this <laughs> um, plus like spoilers there's a like horrible grimdark violent thing that happens in the book like boo you know um like logan when he has to um kill that guy who he like respected yeah and the end like the last line of part one is just like like he's tired of it he just i wish the violence was over like i'm tired of living this way yeah so that's like a moment where you're like oh that's heavy and then several children get murdered in this and they let that be heavy too they're like yeah that was fucked up yeah <laughs> they don't make a joke out of that even like um logan's friends like they're they show up every once in a while too which i really want them to all get back together <laughs> no comment <laughs> i'm sure they will at some point they're both going in the same direction they're gonna cross paths but um I really want them to get back together and be like a friend group again because they're all this a bunch of berserkers going around killing bad guys in the countryside and occasional children, which is horrible, but... I think you see it more in the later books, but like the interaction of the Northmen who are kind of... You get this like sort of like Viking-y, pagan, like mm -hmm. they're kind of more wild vibe from them. And when they interact with sort of the civilized empire forces... When they, like, anytime those paths cross, the way that people are just like, oh my god, they're just, like, so uncouth. Mm -hmm. And these guys are like, yeah, well, this is war, so we're effective at it. You guys are less so. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, when Logan's in the capital, he's just like, they're always finding ways to make easy shit harder. Like, why are they eight steps to doing this? <laughs> like, can't I just have a chamber pot? No, I have to go down the, down this, like, oh, this yeah. hallway to the privy where my junk, like, sways in the wind uncomfortably. <laughs> like, he's just like, I could have just peed in this bowl. What's going on, guys? Like, yeah, Logan's very Keep it simple. Yeah. I was say, but even the title of the book, kind of, like, what you were saying about how this, like, over, like, tone and theme of sort of, like, everyone, not j Logan more probably than other characters, but a lot of the characters, like, Glockta, he's, like, the victim of war that everyone's kind of, like, over it when it comes to violence it's not like something that everyone's just mm -hmm. like i'm so excited to go to war no one is excited to go to war yeah. everyone just like oh, i guess and like the name of the book the blade itself comes from that quote the blade itself incites to violence and how like all these men like have weapons are around weapons are in like a war-centric political and like geographic culture and area and they all just like there's like no option to not engage in violence when you're surrounded by it mm -hmm. and they're all like this sort of this ennui that I feel like I yeah. resonate with because it's not I feel like a lot of fantasy books are like war and honor and like fight the battle for the battle and these yeah. guys are just like oh more war there's oh, also no God. clear good guy or bad guy so it's just all just people fighting each other for seemingly stupid reasons yeah and like it's a lot of the boots on the ground being like why are we in this war <laughs> like someone told us to fight I guess I'm fighting now <laughs> yeah so I mean it does do some like cerebral interesting things and has like you know some interesting thought experiments in it too but also it's just horribly violent <laughs> it's, it's quite violent because I do tend to like warn people like it's very violent like don't just like pick it up and read it like be sure you want to read something that violent and grim and probably I over like warn people because both I think Mara and Jade were like it wasn't as dark as I expected after you had said it was so, so dark. And I was like, that's better than the other way around. If I'd been like, read it. And they're like, oh my God, this is so dark. It was as dark as I expected it to be, which was pretty dark. I think, I don't know why, like, they wouldn't find it as dark. Maybe because I read more fluffy rom-coms. But for me, it was just, it's a complete opposite of what I'm used to. But it was just, it's very dark. And I think if you, I don't know, I feel like I just connected to the characters a bit and I felt that darkness with them. Well, I feel like, again, like, I think it's also just the fact that his, like, tone is more sort of, like, like, it's a lot of, like, sarcasm and a lot of, like, that's just how shit is, as opposed to, like, something really, like, constantly philosophizing and being, like, how depressing and dark it is that I mm -hmm. have must kill and kill again. It's more just, like, I have to kill so that I can live. It's okay. just how it is, yeah. And so. I don't know. I felt, like, just having to live like that and that's, like, their normal existence to be extra sad so like i don't know maybe i felt it but they're not like a bunch of hamlets running around being like what is life <laughs> yeah they're just like stab <laughs> like, either i die or you die and i'm picking you <laughs> yeah although okay so when i first started the book my favorite character was logan just because mm. he's kind of sarcastic and he's just like by the end of the book though like i'm like a little horrified of him though I think you're meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> I think Full Joe berserker. I'm not like trying to like over exaggerate. Like oh, no. head butt. Like he to also death. literally doesn't remember <laughs> what he does when he like Yeah. Because he switches and turn becomes a completely different person. It's like hulking out. It's yeah. literally like when the Hulk's like, I don't know what I did as the Hulk because I became the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. So we're a little horrified of him at the end. But like when you first meet him, he's just like 
how am I still alive? Like I fell off a cliff. <laughs> I feel like I like that too. That that um, it's a thing he does like throughout his books. Um, and obviously in this book as well, where like not every character, but a lot of his characters kind of develop what feels like a mantra. So like with Logan Nine Fingers, it tends to be like I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Like yeah. he just like cannot quite believe that he still is, but he's like, that's the bar. <laughs> like I he's can't like expect lucky. more than that. And then with Glockta, it's, why do I do this? Because, like, his whole life is pain. His job is to inflict pain. And he's like, why? Why do I even bother to get up? Like, why do I do this? Why? And, like, I just feel like this, like, recurring theme with each of them, where it's not, like, some heavy-handed, super philosophical theme. It's just more of, like, a, yeah, like, the situation they're in, where they're like, this is the level we're working with. When was Giselle's theme? Fuck boy. (laughs) I mean, I also really, like, appreciate... How, and you'll see more of, obviously, Giselle, Giselle's character in the second and third books. He probably has the most thorough, like, actual character arc. Mm-hmm. Where, like, he's not the same person from the beginning as he is from the end. Um, but that said, like, I just, I like how, like, you're in the headspace of him. Where he feels totally righteous and justified in being better than everyone else around him. Yes. He's like, how dare you waste my time? I'm attractive. I'm rich. Why should I have to do anything I don't want to do? I'm going to get in my G-Ragon and drive away. Like, <laughs> Like that. Like when he's expected to train for a tournament, he's just like, why? What? Why? <laughs> Haven't you seen me? I'm handsome. <laughs> yeah, and like you expect like your handsome heroic hero, like hero to like when he like has to meet Be Glockta. humble and like sweet yeah. and he's just like, no, fuck y'all. <laughs> like in another book, there's a scene where he meets Glockta and they're like sitting and talking and in another book, you would expect that scene to be one of like a come to Jesus moment where Giselle's like, man, like I'm looking kind of in a mirror of like just like Glockta is who I could become one day. Like, because that's sort of the path I've chosen and I should have more humility about whatever. But no, no. that is not the reaction. So fuck boy. <laughs> and Glock is like, I hate you for being what I used to be. I used to be attractive and an asshole. And I hate you because you were me. <laughs> that's so. some real self-loathing right there. <laughs> no. Glock doesn't like himself now. But he doesn't like... He didn't like himself he then either. <laughs> like, but the ladies liked me and I miss that. <laughs> yeah. He was a fuckboy too. But the chicks were great. <laughs> I forget if it's in this book or a later one where, like, someone is, like, asking... Making him get out of bed. And I think he's shat himself again. And That's in this one. He, well, like, probably again. He, like, sings a song about eating oatmeal. And it's, like, this, like, like moment of, like, kind of, like, slightly off your rocker. Where he's had it with like acting normal, so he just like does this sing songy little dance about how much he loves oatmeal, even though he like he fucking hates oatmeal, and like his like practicals don't know what to do about that because <laughs> they just like their job is to get him up and out of bed, and he's just like lost it for a second. <laughs> I don't remember if that happens in this one or not, but I remember he does shit sim- himself regularly. Regularly, so that probably happened. That happened, and I think he does do weird things in here to his practicals. We're just like we don't know what to do now. <laughs> they're not smart, but they're fairly reliable. Yeah. I feel like the way Glockta talks tricks. to his practicals is a little bit like in the book of Harry, like the Harry Potter books, the way that Harry talks to Dudley when he knows he's making jokes that Dudley doesn't get to insult Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Glockta treats his practicals. He's like, I know you don't understand what I'm saying and I'm insulting you. Don't worry, I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I did just compare Sand and Glockta to Harry Potter. <laughs> to future Harry. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever done that before. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, Sand, and then Giselle, and then the wizard. Those are like the main characters. Yeah, Artie and West, but they're, they're more like tertiary characters, I think. And then like Logan's pals. Um, who else? I don't know. I'm still talking about the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I he's do the only find character. The he's the only character that I really genuinely kind of like. I feel like his uh, condescension, like. That's, I, that's yeah. the exact word I couldn't think of. Or he's just, like, had it with these, like... Because he's clearly, like, really ancient and very wise. Mm-hmm. But in that Sherlock way where he's just like, oh, you small-brained little fools. Like, yeah. I don't know why I waste my time with you. I know so much more than you. <laughs> yeah, he's always, like, so comfortable in every situation he's in. And he'll say, like, weird stuff and just be a complete jackhole, like, to everybody. But he's just like, in the end, like, I'm going to win this fight. Like, he's, like, so comfortable with everything. So I just like his vibe. And he's also, like... And then he, like, he blew up a wall naked, and I was like, that's a lot. <laughs> he'll, like, come across as, like, chill, and, like, he'll totally talk to you, and be, like, really relaxed and calm, and, like... Yeah, he would, like, smoke real. a pipe with you. And well, then if you journey. say something, like, 
if it's all been leading to like something else or if you're disagreeing with him and he like flips the switch and he's then like, he goes full like I'm full wizard <laughs> like when um what's her face in lord of the rings when she's like oh i'm an evil queen yeah. she, he, like that's the flip <laughs> where it's how, like little gandalf's like really chill but then when he's in, in bilbo's house and he's like all of a sudden like darkening the yeah. house and being like Bilbo Baggins like, uh, yeah it's that but it's like scarier because like you're not sure he's on the side of good anymore and you're yeah. like oh <laughs> this something's about to get fucked up and you're hoping it's not you essentially please be on my team still please be on like, my team still <laughs> yeah his magic is like you were saying earlier it's unsettling what yeah. happens when he uses it <laughs> so he's just like <laughs> because Logan's like hanging out with him he's kind of like a bodyguard and he just he burns down the entire forest he's just like <laughs> Logan's like speechless at that point. He's like, oh, all right, um, pretty much. Let's, let guess. Let's go. <laughs> I feel like that's Logan's attitude towards life most yeah. of the time. What have I got myself into? What is happening? Okay. <laughs> so, like I said, there's not like a ton of plot here. Yeah, that's a lot of like. There's all set up pieces in place. Yeah, little like pieces. So I don't really know what the story is about at all yet. I know it has something to do with these North, the, the King in the North guy who's going to invade. I forget all the characters' names, like, immediately. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of characters. It's fantasy. Like, who are we calling? Like, the forehead guy and... <laughs> <laughs> the forehead guy and then, like, the lizard boy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're not from this book. They're from something they're else. They're from Teen Wolf. They're Teen it's Wolf. It's totally relevant. We <laughs> both really like this show. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> anyway, so, King of the North guy. King of the North guys. He's planning some shit. He's like, I'm going to invade England or whatever. It's Eng England instead of England. I'm like, okay. He's like, going to invade over there. He's just like, no, that should be mine. La la la. As so they do. You yeah. Know, and fantasy he, stories. More land must be mine. And he sent that like weirdo guy who's like stabbing himself saying, I'll duel you for it. I'll duel you for England. He sent like this demon guy. So I assume that has something to do with something. And then the wizard guy, he's just like, oh, we got to get in that tower. I got to grab this thing, the seed. And then there's this, like, who's the, the slave woman? Oh, um. I forget her name. Yes. <laughs> I do, too. I'm pretty sure her and Logan are going to bang and it's going to be terrible. It's but anyway. Like the, is it not? We can find out. <laughs> anyway, he keeps saying something called the seed. And I'm assuming it, she's related to, like, the maker somehow. And he, she's he's going to do some magic with her. No comment. Like, I read the book. <laughs> like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with it. Okay, I'm trying to Shit, find... What is her name? I swear it starts with a V. We're gonna find it. We're gonna find it. Keep talking. I'll look. No, oh, I'm thinking. I must guess her name. <laughs> I've read this book more than once. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Pharaoh. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm in the one called The Bloody Nine, that chapter. That's the Berserker chapter, and I know he's with her, so I'm like, where is it? Yeah, because even she's like, holy Pharaoh. shit. Pharaoh. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Pharaoh. She's like, move, pink. <laughs> <laughs> she calls everybody pinks because, like, I'm assuming she has brown skin and everyone else has pink skin. So she just calls everyone pinks. <laughs> she's she's not very friendly. Yeah. She's pretty prickly. She's, pretty, she's like female Logan, I'd say. Yeah. Slightly less terrifying. Like, she doesn't go berserker at any point. But she was cool with it when he did. Yeah. I mean, it, it worked out to her advantage. Yeah. It got them out of there. They're kind of friends now. It's handy. I just feel like they're going to bang and it's going to be terrible. Squelching. <laughs> much squelching like if they're they would never have good sex with each other it's gonna be bad i don't think anyone has ever had good sex in an abercrombie book i mean if anything like that does happen you're like the it's only reason whoops. this is happening is because something more terrible is about to happen <laughs> it's the only reason this is like anytime anything good or seemingly good is happening you're like this can only mean bad things <laughs> there's no way he's letting this actually be like happiness <laughs> no does Giselle ever get with Artie? No comment. <laughs> Just tell me. I'm gonna want to, I don't want to Google it. <laughs> well, define get with. Like, she said she would wait for him. I don't think she's gonna wait for him. And then, I, I don't know if he's gonna, like, she's gonna, probably gonna have sex with him, but not, like, want to be with him. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing these characters. I'm just guessing. I'm really good at guessing the it's future, not apparently. Like redemption and wedding bells, if that's what you want. Then you're leading their own Is he theory. just going to be really disappointing in bed? And she's like, Ugh, I don't need to be tied down to that. It's more Abercrombie than that. <laughs> no comment. Oh, poor guy. No, not poor guy. He's a fuckboy. He keeps getting me. This is how fuckboys get you. <laughs> because he's so pretty. Oh, one of the... These like mass mic. So this is Logan on the cover. 
UK uh, mass market paperbacks. They have, uh, this is a Glockta on the cover. Okay. I want to see. And then I like, I feel that's so. That's like kinder version of Glockta that I would he's think. not smiling. <laughs> no, I'm just like, that's even like not horrible. Like I picture like he's Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Like that looks like he's a human. You know what I mean? He's like, I'm very cut off though. So the Gollum part is. Yeah, no, like his face. He doesn't look like he has like a mud flap for a face. Like, I feel like yeah, that's, like, kind. As well. That's and a I, kind version of Glockta. I feel very vindicated in comparing, like, well, I guess I mainly compare Glockta to Jamie Lannister, but Giselle's kind of Jamie, because this is Giselle, and he looks mm-hmm. just like Jamie Lannister. I don't picture Giselle like that either, though. But he's definitely looks yeah, like Yeah, like, you know, I don't know. It's just I like picture, Nicolai Coster walled out. I picture, well, that, this is not going to make any more sense to you, Perfect. but like whiskey. Um, so <laughs> Whiskey makes sense to me. Whiskey make, is about. making my brain make connections. Because I picture, um, what's his name, Giselle. I picture him the same way I picture Cassius from Red Rising. Okay. They're I like the that. same face to me. Kind of like a curlier blonde head. I just feel like Cassius is actually like, like good. <laughs> like yeah. at stuff. And Giselle is, like, passable, but also rich and attractive. But he's, like, good at stuff, too. But he's not that good, because he, like, he was totally, like, gonna lose his duel, and he doesn't want to train. Like, he's, like, I. But then he, like, won all those battles at the end. Uh, well, the wizard did cheat, but... The wizard did cheat. <laughs> but, like, fighting against that, like, behemoth guy, I'm like, no one's gonna win. He held his own, though, for like a bit. Cassie, not anyway. relevant. Sorry, we went off onto another series watch of watch my books. channel, you also read Red Rising, or you should expect that's to in, hear it referenced. Yeah, that's in our center of our Venn diagram, where we both I really literally like have those. Abercrombie and Red Rising books, like, mushed together there. in one section right there. <laughs> that's in the center. Yep. That's, a, like, a commonality book. But, yeah, so he's like Cassius to me. I see that. Because Cassius I, is a fuckboy, too, when you first meet him. But more of a fuck. Yeah, no, Cassius Giselle, has redeeming qualities. Yes, no, Cassius is the better of the two men. <laughs> but, like, I, I feel like true. they're similar. I see that, I see that. The way I picture Cassius is the way I picture Giselle. By the way, I'm going to bring this up because I sent you this text when I was reading Giselle. This, I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> so, there's this song by Lizzo called Because I Love You. Go watch that video. Listen to the lyrics. Tell me that's not fucking Giselle. <laughs> Now it's basically his it. fucking theme song towards the end of the book. If I when I reread the blade itself <laughs> again, it will one hundred percent be fuck boy, fuck boy, fuck boy. boy. I will have that sound like song playing in the background. <laughs> when he finally changed like, my Abercrombie experience, he decided he's like in love with Addie. Not that he knows what love is really, but like that song is like perfect. I'd play it, but you have monetization, so let's not get demonetized. <laughs> okay, we'll look it up. You have homework. <laughs> we'll put a link. We'll put a link to it in the, the description. Yes. We'll You'll have do that. <laughs> Amanda's video, followed by the soundtrack you need to listen to when you read Giselle's chapters. In the You're going to have a lovely Saturday. <laughs> We're changing your life. Fact. One book at a time. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, this has pretty much been a success because you went out and bought the trilogy and I ordered like two of the three books that I read from the video down below. So that Amanda made me read. Yeah, you so, know, read something you're not usually wanting to read. Sometimes you find something really cool you didn't think you were gonna like. Find a friend who will make you read their favorite. <laughs> Because it can work out. <laughs> Leanne has gotten me to read a lot of books. So this was kind of me being a Slytherin, being like, I'm going to make you read these. <laughs> and I did and bought them. Yeah, so there you go. No, I bought a lot of them. You, you made me read um, Radiance. Which Radiance? Radiance. Radiance. Um, and Treat Me. I've read a lot of books, I know, that you've said, like, you got to read this, Jacobi. Well, it's because you read romance, and I have, like, two romance books that I know. And I'm <laughs> Those like, are both of them. Here you go. <laughs> read those. <laughs> Now we have something in common. <laughs> Yay. No, okay, so the books I made you read are by Tessa Dare. And I will say... Anna Andrews. Anna Lona Andrews, but you didn't like that one, so, so we're just going to pretend like that. that didn't happen, even though this is one of my favorite books. Anyway, Tessa Dare. Tessa. I talk about Tessa Dare a lot on my channel. She writes historical romances, but they're legit very funny. They're very funny. Yeah. Like, I for someone that reads Grimdark, to go read that and still think they're funny. Yeah. And kind of good. Well, also, like, as I told Amanda, like, one of my favorite things in the book that she tricked me into reading, because it wasn't <laughs> one of my assigned reading books, but it was, like, the next book. And she was like, I brought it with me in case you want to read it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I did kind of slide the book at you and be like, so, yeah. And she was like, the Duke is more of a fuckboy. And I was like, I don't think I'm about that. She's like, but his wards are, like, Wednesday Adamses that are obsessed with death and kill their dolls and have funerals for them. And I was just like, okay. 
I will read this. I'm intrigued. I you had me at Wednesday Adams. <laughs> <laughs> so, if that's a trope, wards that kill their dolls, <laughs> give me more of those, please. <laughs> the creepy children. <laughs> yes, this is a fantasy romance trope that I'm I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that does it. So, moral of the story: read outside your comfort zone. For real. Like, you too, Leanna. Do it more. But also read The First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie <laughs> first. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. Yep. Check out the video down below, which yeah. is on a managed channel. Us doing wines and bodice rippers. I did drink a lot of wine. Like, there was wine. There was like we wine. finished the bottle and then I spilled my wine at one point, too. Like, it's so kind, kind of, of cheated on finishing it. One for the homies, you know? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, check out Amanda. She's fabulous. She posts videos way more often than I do. So if you want like regular week, content, not like once a week <laughs> if we're lucky, then definitely subscribe to Amanda. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you next Saturday. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Our brilliance. I'm going to do intro talking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're doing.